Good evening, everyone, and a very warm welcome to all of you. We are now approximately 103 persons uh, entering this room for our third webinar uh, in the Nordic uh, uh, community here. So we are very happy to have you here. While people are ticking in here, uh, I would like to uh, say welcome to a young lady today. We have announced uh, the youngest uh, ex-ambassador in our team, in our Nordic team. And when I say young, uh, that implicates that uh, she does whatever she wants. And uh, sometimes she uh, she are experimenting with uh, different kinds of stuff. And when I try to get in touch with her, with her, she might be sitting on Himalaya mountains and meditating or doing yoga or something else. And uh, that's the interesting part with our guest tonight. That's the way to be not influenced by the world and just tasting on everything that's out there. And it makes uh, maybe this uh, ex-photographer more free in her presence and the way he, she shoots her pictures. And that's why I would like to uh, say a warm welcome to Sonia. And I would like to hear us. Are you there, Sonia, tonight? Yes, I am. Yeah. <laughs> There you are, and here she is. So, welcome to you, Sonia. Um, how are you? Thank you very much, Eve, uh, I, and thank you for the lovely introduction. That was really nice. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm really good. I'm super excited, um, and I'm looking forward to uh, show you my photos and um, hopefully answer some questions you might have. And um, it's really nice to be here. Yeah, it's nice to have you here. And as I told, uh, told about you, that you. You can sit on the top mountain and meditate and so on. And, and that's the, the, the great part with you that you, you have this, you, you just do stuff. And maybe us with house and children and wife and car and dog, we, we cannot just go to Tibet and, and meditate if one. So we have to re rely on you that you do it for us. And you, you really do. So that's uh, fantastic. Tonight, we're not only two persons, and as we have been the previous two webinars, we have our control tower, and in our control tower, we have Fleming Bo. And Fleming Bo, are you uh, ready tonight? Checking in, ready to uh, keep a uh, order and produce a great show. So happy to be back here, and uh, thank you to everyone tuning in for our third webinar here on uh, Fujifilm Nordic. It is super exciting to have Sonia here today, and she's a really good storyteller. She's going to take us on a really awesome journey through a lot of different pictures and genres, and I can't wait. For all of you out there, um, I'm also going to be your sort of eyes in the chat, so you can fire away all the questions you like. I will keep a copy-paste them all and keep a log of all the questions, and Maybe occasionally during the presentation, we will ask some questions or we will take them uh, afterwards, but have fun in the chat, uh, fire away all the questions. And I just want to add at the end as well, that if you don't want to be in the chat, you don't have to, you don't even have to look at it. There's actually this little red button with three dots. If you don't, and that kind of collapses the whole panel of the chats and then you get an even bigger view of us and who doesn't want that? So. If you don't want the chat, but bigger viewing area, just hit those like that little red button. It collapses the whole chat. But I'll be in the chat. I'll see you there, and I can't wait for the show. Fantastic. We are we are ready, and we have been ready for several weeks now. So I won't actually talk too much because I do that quite often. Talk too much, so I actually leave the stage. And we have done that uh, before in Copenhagen, but now tonight the stage is yours, uh, Sonia, and um, you have a presentation for us and fire away, please. We are looking so much forward. Thank you so much, Ip. Um And uh, yeah, thank you for, for being here. And um, I think I'll just start 
uh, start by uh, telling you uh, a little bit about myself. Um, my name is Sonja and um, I am 23 years old, um, 23 years young, and uh, I am from uh, Copenhagen, Denmark. Um, and, um, and I would like to tell you a little bit about uh, how my whole photography journey started. And it was actually in, um, in high school. Uh, I studied in a, a high school in Sweden and um, it was really, really magical for me because the thing is with this high school was that you were able to have skateboarding as a class. And back then I was a, a very dedicated skater. It was, it meant everything to me at that time. Um, this is in 2014 when I started. And, um, and yeah, skating was everything. And I thought it was the most cool place on earth. Uh, this high school called Bruggeriet in Malmo um, that I was like, this is the dream and I just want to go there. And um, I was in a skateboarding class and it was amazing. But the thing is, even though you were in the skateboarding class, you also had filming and photography as subjects. And it was really, really cool for me to um, try out these different things, like try out the filming and the photography too. And um, it went very well hand in hand with skateboarding too. So it was like really, really cool for me. But uh, slowly, I just started to become much more uh, focused and interested in the photography rather than skateboarding. I still skated a lot for sure, but I just suddenly I just had this new um, new passion uh, of mine, like uh, which was photography. And so uh, I started using uh, more of my time with uh, spending time with the photography, being out in the streets, taking photos, trying out, explore. Uh, and and less skating so like gradually gradually i made this transition from being a skater to a photographer and this happened halfway through uh, the second year of high school so probably somewhere in 2015 and um and uh, this camera that you see here uh, on the on the screen uh, was actually my very first camera and it was a x pro 1 and uh, I got it right after I graduated from high school because I was left with this huge passion suddenly for photography, but I didn't have my own camera because I always used the ones from the school. Uh, and then I discovered this camera because I got it recommended. And, um, and that's also actually wh where my Fuji journey started because I used, I have been using Fuji cameras ever since I bought that one because it worked. It was good. It was incredible. Image quality, all that was really good. So, so yeah, I stick to that. Um, on this photo, there's a 35 millimeter lens on it, but I there came I bought a, or there was an 18 millimeter lens that came with that camera. So actually, that setup, the X Pro One with the with a standard um, 18 millimeter lens, was the setup that I used for quite a long time, and I didn't really know too much. I was really like a beginner, so I just I was shooting everything with that setup and it's like i sh for instance like i shot so many portraits with that bloody 18 millimeter because i just did not know better really and i was like this is all i have so this is all i can use um but but as i graduate like uh, upgraded to uh, the 35 millimeter that i got shortly after i just realized the difference and what like the, the things that comes with a slightly more a zoomed lens. And that was really, really nice for me to to get that and to like um, explore. I feel like uh, my photos <laughs> got a lot better from that point on. But um, but yeah, <clears throat> um, even though I was suddenly back then in 2015, very, very hooked on uh, photography, I still obviously uh, I had a, a lot of love for skateboarding. I still skated and I had a, a huge network in skateboarding and a lot of friends that skated. And so for me, combining these two passions, skateboarding and photography, was pretty obvious to me that, of course, I have to, to play around with the skateboard photography. So, uh, so I did that um, and um, it was super cool uh, for me to, to play around with that. 
And then um, just want to say this photo is from Brazil. It's my friend Ezekiel, just uh, just cruising really. Um, but the thing is that pretty shortly after I I started with skateboard photography, I developed this rather artistic uh, look, and it all happened um, uh, in Copenhagen actually on the um, at a spot uh, in Nørrebro, a part of Copenhagen called Nørrebro which is uh, the left photo with all the stripes on the ground and it was just me and my two friends that we, we went out there and um, and uh, we were biking around town and we got to this spot and I was like there was just something about these stripes on the ground that I was like whoa this is super cool we have to we have to do something here let's see what we can do and uh, <clears throat> I asked my German friend Vincent to go on top and like trying to do a kickflip into the um, like into the hill and da da da, and captured the moment and um, and it was actually when I went home afterwards and was sitting in uh, Photoshop and editing this photo that I first like started making it black and white because I liked that and then it was like this tree in the background that I tried to take away and I was like well, that looks pretty good and there was also like a, a building um, that I tried to take away too and it's like just trying to like actually make this complete white background and suddenly I was like okay suddenly I had this photo uh, in front of me I was like okay it's very different from the original but I really like it somehow it's very artistic very abstract um but um but there was something about the aesthetic in such a photo that uh, that really talked to me and so from that point on this was in 2015 I just um started a uh, going more into this and playing around with it and um yeah and so I, ever since i've been super fond of like playing around with compositions and shadows and lines and reflections and you know shapes and forms and monuments and uh, and whatnot um to create these like rather artistic scale photos and um and the photo on the right is my friend matthias from santiago in chile uh, this is uh, my friend Manuel from uh, a town in uh, in Chile too. Um, and yeah, as you can see, it is. I also like like when you know creating a photo where it's not obvious at the like at first to see exactly like what's what's up and down and um, and um, yeah, what's going on. Um, and uh, the thing is, uh, all my skate photos. Um, like nearly all of them have happened pretty spontaneously uh, on site. And um, it's mostly been when I've usually been maybe traveling or, and um, maybe walking down the street or something like that. And like so many times I've just seen, you know, maybe a monument or a square or a building or something in, in the street where I felt like, you know, been looking at it and thinking like okay there is some there's some potential here for a artistic skateboarding photo somehow and then it's usually been just like me uh, calling up a friend maybe if i if i if i happen to have a skater friend in the city um luckily i i, I do have a, a skate friends in, in many many parts of this world but 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 maybe just like googling a local skaters organization club something to to find just one skater, a man or woman, doesn't matter, but just to come and, and be my model uh, now that I've found this spot, maybe. Um, and uh, this photo here is from a um, from Rio de Janeiro in uh, Brazil. And uh, I just, again, I just went to the square with two friends and, and actually it was, uh, it was pretty clouded in the beginning. But, uh, but then suddenly the sun came out and that created these incredible uh, shadows on the ground uh, where I was just like, whoa, this is like, this, I got really excited. I was like, Fuck, we, have to, um, we have to do something here. And the, the black part, um, these lines is actually some uh, huge uh, concrete pillars because it was like some, like an art. And, um, and I was like, what if I somehow crawled up to this and took took it from above and so I tried that and it was like 
pretty far up. Um, but luckily, I got a bit of help from my friends. They lifted me on my like with my feet. And then, but then I suddenly like I realized that I had maybe this like this space, like there was a bit surface like that went outside of the pillar that I could just stand on. So it was a bit sketchy, but I was like holding onto this pillar and like with my camera, just trying to get it from above and like really afraid of falling down. And, um, but yeah, it's my friend Ayn Adam from, uh, yeah, from Brazil doing a, doing a power site here. And luckily I managed to like <laughs> place it like right in, in the middle where, where I wanted it because I am very perfectionistic when it comes to like uh, having the model, so to speak, in the right place of the photo. But, um, but yeah, um, and this is, um, the left is uh, from Brazil and um, the one on the right is from, uh, is from Malmo uh, in southern in Sweden. A really, really beautiful monument, I think. So it's like, I, I'm, I'm very, I'm very aware of like where the skaters are in accordance to the photo because for instance down here with the on the right like i just felt like it makes sense in this you know the, the white space uh, in between the, the two monuments on the right um and um and yeah this is a, a another friend matthias that was in a previous photo too also in um in santiago in chile and um i wanted to share um I felt like sharing the original photo of this one with you because then you can see how um, how different it sometimes is from uh, like how different the end result sometimes is from uh, from the original. Not always, but 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 sometimes I really uh, I really work a lot on the photo, and um, and it's very conscious because I want a very specific. Uh, photo very artistic and I, I know exactly how I want it but it's like um, yeah it's like uh, sometimes it requires a lot of ed editing and that you can see maybe here because the original photo of this looks like this in reality um, so um, so yeah as you can see it's quite uh, it's quite different Eep is on the line yeah, and we did, we have uh, actually decided when we pop up, we have a question. Okay. And I, I want to say, you're cheating, aren't you? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Just a little bit. Just We're, a little bit. Yeah. Why I suddenly pop up is uh, because uh, we've been discussing this cheating uh, when we do uh, post, post, but it's... Uh, first, the first time when I talk to you, it's it's more like you see the picture way before you actually have edited the the pictures um am i right when when you, you you see stuff and then you have an idea and then you you go home and then you work with it and then is it is the right right the uh, uh sort of view that i have on it that you work like that absolutely uh, absolutely uh 100 uh i would say almost 99 percent of the times uh I, when I see this, the when I look at this building or monument or square where I think it has, where I think it has uh, some potential for a photo, it's like it's like I see the end result in front of me. So it, this is also actually very a good example because when I looked at that building on the left, it was almost as I saw uh, the photo on the right uh, in front of me. Um, and I remember it was, yeah, it was in, um, it was in, in Santiago, a huge city. And I was uh, just walking around by myself one of the days and, uh, da -da 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 -da, and I looked to the right and there is this building and I'm really into architecture too. And I just was like, just like looking at it for some time and thought there was something interesting about all these lines. And, and then it just hit me like, it has artistic skate photo potential. And, uh, I was like, you know, calling my friend Matthias, like, ah. Oh, is there any chance we can set up a, a session here to um, to to work with this? Because I have this vision uh, that I would like to try to create, um, and uh, luckily he, he had time, and and we we uh, we made it happen. But um, but I have to say that it was also a bit of a challenge, and um, it often is a bit more challenging uh, than I than I could <laughs> wish for, and uh, and it's it's because um, there are just often many small things we don't that i that i forget to take into account in in the whole mission but for instance here like 
<clears throat> the street in front of us were like a really really big street with like five lanes i think so like there was like constantly passing cars and uh, we had so we had to time it with like the 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 the, the, the traffic light and the other traffic light in the end so like there was like a few seconds uh, maybe a half a minute or something of like no cars and then we really had to be effective before they all like came for a long time and also just um the thing is like when i when i yeah when i do these photos i also as i said before i'm very very perfectionistic and i'm like very stubborn too so i knew exactly that i wanted matthias right there where he is because i just thought that was a really really good like uh, area and the photo where he could be and and the th and the thing is so sometimes for instance so the, th the thing is in, in skateboarding just first of all so everyone understands i think it's with most sports photography but there is this certain uh, moment the catch it's called at least maybe in skateboarding and it's like it's that it's the correct moment for a photograph and it's like so with skateboarding you have to you have to you have to have this certain like you have to take the photo in a certain moment with at the in the trick so that the viewer can understand what kind of trick it is and and stuff like that so um i've practiced over the years to try to capture this very very specific moment that is that is only that only lasts for a second um and um and uh, so yeah so it was a combination of like i needed to get the right the very very right moment i needed him to be right there in the middle um and it needed to be like when there was no cars and all of that so it was like uh, definitely quite challenging but for instance i knew that um I just want to mark this area here i knew that this little part that you know that i could take away so it it didn't really matter that his him, his hand went uh, over it but but just like in general i wanted him to be like there and uh, and yeah, sometimes with, with these missions, we we end up doing a millions of tries before it's perfect because maybe maybe sometimes the catch would be perfect, uh, but then there's the front of a car in the middle of a photo or he would be perfectly centered in that area, but I didn't get the catch or something like that. So it's like, yeah, uh, sometimes we really had to try. But um, and yeah, uh, but uh, Luckily, a handful of times I've succeeded to to get the photo as I wanted it, at least. So yeah. Ip. I pop up again, and and the guys asked uh, how do I teach my son to do skate photos, and it's it's hard work, and maybe uh, you know looking at the right spot and have a skater along with you. I have a, a a question too, because do you shoot automatic or do you shoot manually when you you do stuff like this? That's a that's a good question. I uh, I have been very stubborn, and I I also think I learned early on that you have to do everything manually. And I was like, okay, gotta learn the hard way. But it's I'm I'm grateful for it today because I I I really practiced being present and and really just like captured the very moment. But um, but what I would do is I would I would uh, if we talk about this photo maybe. I would tell Matthias to go there, and then I would I would I was on the other street with a zoom lens, but I would tell, but I was yeah, ask him to stand there, and then I would put the sharpness on him manually, uh, and then I would just because then I know that it was sharp right there, and then I was just uh, yeah, and then I, so I and then I would just do a single shot, so I don't do the uh, what's called the frequency something sports function is I don't know what it's called, but like this one is. Huh? Called burst mode. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't do that. Even though sometimes I'm like, no, oh, life would be easier with that. But, but I don't know. But it's like, but I've I've practiced like capturing in when when he's in the air and that moment is right. Um. So so yeah, I I mostly do everything manually. Yeah. All right. Um. Fleming? Yep. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> uh, a couple more questions about the skate pictures that I thought would be a good time to uh, to take now. First of all, 
Uh, lots of people are saying that they absolutely love these and they've never seen this sort of conceptual skate work. And I agree, it, it's it's really fantastic. The uh, Some of the questions were, uh, Ian Peterson was asking, uh, what's your advice to uh, my son or his son who wants to start uh, shooting skateboarding? Ooh. Um, who am I to tell anything? <laughs> well, uh, I am. Um, uh, first of all, I think uh, it's just about going out there with your camera and your skateboard or friend, and you know, your sk skater friend, um, and try it out. Try different things. Um, maybe talk to someone, uh, some skaters that maybe knows a little bit about when the moment is. I can can teach you that. Um, and um, the golden moment uh, that is very apparently very very important. No, but it really is. And um, and um, and and yeah, I guess it depends also if you if you like the more artistic side of it. Uh, I would yeah, I would really play around with the with lines and compositions and shadows and maybe even turning the camera a little bit, uh, you know, to 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 one side and and see what happens uh, then. Um, but I, but of course, it's it's very much about finding your style because the thing is, uh, traditional, so to speak, traditional uh, skateboard photography, I think is completely opposite of what I'm doing. Of at least very very different. The photos, the skateboarding photos you would see in Treasure Magazine, which is the most famous skateboarding magazine in the world, that would be like first of all colorful, typically, and it would be a, a fisheye lens. Because that's a classic skateboarding lens. It's like you can be really close, but you can you can see the entire spot, and it would be like you know the, the focus in traditional skateboard photography. The focus is very much on the trick, which makes a lot of sense because of course it's like young skaters want to be inspired by skaters in general want to be inspired by these uh, you know incredible skateboard skaters that can do all these very very cool and advanced tricks. But for me. Personally, the, the very trick itself has never been the important thing. Like to me, it doesn't matter if the skater just cruises, like it's just standing still on in the board, or if they're doing a super advanced trick. To me, it's like the, the like everything in the photo, like the, the 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 line, the aesthetics combined with the trick and and all this, this is what matters to me. So sometimes I even ask the skater, like, can you maybe do this trick instead that I know is less advanced, then, but can you do that? Because I know that your posture, the body looks better when you do that. Actually, the photo that's on the screen now on the left, I felt like that specific trick fitted some for some reason very good there. And I asked him to do that. And so so I think it's about finding your style. And but 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 by doing that, just go out and try a lot of different things. And then you would then you would know like what you prefer, you know, and slowly you can find your way, I think. That's how I did it, at least. Awesome. Do, do you sometimes find that skaters would then go, but it must, you must be the catch. You have to this moment. And uh, it's quite cool that you're not fixated on that, but does that sometimes mean the skaters go like, no, no, I want, like, it has to show off my trick. Oh, yeah, I've been, yeah, yeah, for sure. I've, like, it's, uh, some of my friends are very, very, uh, talented skaters uh, some of the most famous in, in the whole world actually and and and, and some of them are a little bit like I, I cannot down not downgrade but it's like they they have a little bit of like pride in like in in, in showing these very very cool advanced tricks they can do but also but but also a lot of them are very humble and are like of course I can just do this very simple thing and I can see that it makes sense in your photo and they respect that and they they're with me right like they, they support my idea mm. and they they are up for it anyway, so it varies a lot, I would say. But but mostly, it's um, they do what I say. So that's good. <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> there was a question as well from uh, Joni wanted to know: Do you always use natural light? Good question. Uh, yeah, I don't think I've ever taken a skateboard photo with uh, if with a flash. It has always been natural light. I think. Don't sue me if if I'm wrong, but but I think uh, at least ninety nine percent of my photos has been natural light. So I I basically only work with the 
with the lovely sun. Yeah. As also because also because I almost yeah like literally all my photos are outdoor too, and that's why like and I I, I yeah. just shoot in the day instead of the night. So so that's why natural light comes in very handy, and it makes sense for me. Totally. Yeah. Awesome. I think we covered most of the other questions you've you've covered already. So yeah, go for it. All right. Then I am gonna go to the next chapter, if you will. Um, <clears throat> traveling and photography, two big passions of mine. Uh, so photography, um. Photography has been a, a really, really big passion of mine for, I think, like six, seven years now. Um, but I would say that traveling has been a passion of mine for a lifetime, at least for the 23 years I've, I've been alive. And um, and um, and to me, uh, it's been great to uh, be able to combine these two. Uh, and that's what I've done uh, a lot. Um, I have... From the moment I became uh, interested in photography, I don't think I've been traveling without a camera ever since because it's just been too interesting to play with. And um, so, yeah, uh, I have been to, I think now more than 50 countries and at least 30 of them have been uh, been on my on my own solo traveling. And it's like when I travel so much around like alone, it's like, my, my camera really becomes my my true loyal friend and um always with me and um and it's super nice to uh, to uh, to do projects with that and, and bring it out and and, and play with it and um uh, the thing is uh, i've always been very very curious and um and i've always loved uh, love uh, meeting new people and um it's never been a problem for me approaching strangers uh, as you can see here in this photo, it's a photo of me uh, from uh, 2019 when I could still travel. No, I, uh, this is like when I was young, obviously. And uh, this is just a few of hundreds of photos my parents have taken of me uh, when I'm just uh, with a local in whatever city uh, we were in. Because I was so very, very lucky to, to, to be raised in a family who were everyone loved traveling and both my grandparents and my parents took me uh, took me out uh, into the whole world when from a very young age we went traveling in really really amazing places very far away from Denmark and um, and I think that has really in so many ways made me the person I am today uh, I think I was born with curiosity that's what my mom tells me at least that uh, that's been with me all life but and I think like I'm, and I'm just so grateful to now as I have been um, been older and been going traveling on my own that I, this curiosity that I've always had I've, I've really been able to <clears throat> take that with me naturally into photography and um, and that's why uh, that's why documentary photography or just taking portraits of people is something that I have done so much something I really really love because it's just there's just something about it it, it is really special to me to um, yeah to meet and interact with locals and um, especially on, on my travels um, and um, yeah this is um, this is a uh, a video that uh, my sister actually recorded of me in um, in the end of 2018 uh, I'm using the uh, X Pro Two camera in this video, but but this video is um, it talks about uh, the whole concept of beauty and what that is um, because I was reflecting a lot uh, around that time, you know what what beauty is when it comes to photography and taking photos of people, portraits and. Yeah, you know what's considered beautiful, and of course that can be interpreted in in many ways. And some would argue maybe that you know, beauty is is this stereotypical look, and you know, this model look with slim cheeks and you know very thin model and da da da. Whereas others, maybe like me, would also argue that 
beauty, yeah, that can be that, but it can also be uh, so much more. And that wrinkles in a face and birthmarks and eyes and all that is like very much beautiful too. And and um, and can bring out a lot of personality. And so for me, um, being able to show real people and um, yeah, like just because uh, all these natural features, I think, t tell so many stories in themselves. And um, and um, so uh, yeah, so yeah, I was reflecting a lot about this whole this whole thing concept of what is beauty. And uh, and then uh, my sister came down um, to uh, Eastern Europe where I was traveling for uh, for two months uh, to do this um, video of me. Um, she was visiting me in. She was with me in two countries, in Bolivia and in Bulgaria. Um, uh, Romania and Bulgaria. I was like, did I just say Bulgaria? Yeah, in Romania and Bulgaria. She was with me um, to shoot this video. And um, I think we should just uh, see it and then we can uh, talk about it afterwards. Fantastic. Let's uh, stop the slide. And Ip and Sonia, remember to turn off the video and the microphones and then we're just going to show you this uh, wonderful four minute movie just a second Photographers often strive to make beautiful pictures. We chase beauty, try to capture it, frame it and present it in the best way. My style of photography is no exception. I travel the world in search of beauty. But what exactly is beauty? I think beauty has many variations. Beauty is more than a scenic landscape, an architectonic building or a style model. What attracts my attention are people and our differences. There is so much beauty to be revealed in the many people around the world. That's why I love to travel armed with my camera and capture those who stand out of the crowd. Those are the people I usually find most beautiful and interesting. However, it is often the poor, the old woman begging on the corner, or the homeless man sleeping in the park. They await my attention, and the beauty of seeing them is what I want to show. Sometimes I don't know if I'm being perceived as disrespectful when I take pictures of people in bad conditions. I'm afraid that people might question my motive because they think I'm trying to display their agony. But that is not and has never been my intention. On the contrary, they hold my utmost respect. And when I get a good shot and the person I photograph approves with a smile, that is the best feeling. I am afraid that hatred and prejudice towards the unknown is becoming too immense in this world. From my experience, approaching people that are marginalized by society has given me some of the most positive and warmest reactions. I yearn to present their beauty and encourage others not to stray away from the unknown, but be curious about it and approach it with an open mind and heart. That is what I try to do with my photography. 
take beautiful pictures of people that might not seem photogenic, but hold great beauty within. And hopefully it helps bringing us closer as a people. That's my mission. One step and one shot at a time. Whoa, amazing. <laughs> yeah. What a travel. And that was when everything was open. But uh, yeah. Oh, God, yeah. it took me back so much like oh, when we were yeah. all able to travel. Yeah. I think you can show us a bit of uh, the world when everything was open. So just keep on doing what you're doing now. So leave the stage to you again. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... Um, I think this video speaks for itself in many ways. Um, if anyone have any questions to it, of course, just let me know. But um, but otherwise, I'll just um, <clears throat> show you just, yeah, now there's just a few uh, of these slides where you can see the behind the shot kind of thing, uh, a screenshot from the from the video, and then the actual photo that I'm shooting in, in that very moment. Um, and um, here with this lovely old man. And uh, yeah, I was so afraid he was gonna wake up this one when <laughs> when I was shooting him, or shooting him when I was taking a photo of him. Um, but yeah, uh, this whole um, oh, she was such a lovely woman. This one, but yeah, this whole um, uh, this whole uh, <sighs> beauty and da da da. It's it's something I've I've really been yeah I've been I've been thinking about it a lot in my in in my whole career like. In, all these years and you know what what's okay what's not okay and where yeah where's the line of like with street photography and yeah you know is there someone you cannot take photos of and in that case why not and i i think a lot of um i don't know if all of you know of the but the danish photographer called jen Graup, um who is a really really talented photographer he takes some incredibly powerful like strong but yet also enormously brutal photos um from war zones and and stuff like that and 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 you know his images is just like you know it, it's so crazy but it's also so strong and and i'm very very inspired by him and it's not that i necessarily want to go to a war zone and take similar photos but i'm just inspired by somehow showing showing reality showing you know people as they actually are and, and what's going on and and i will talk about this also a little bit later uh, when i'm going to show you some some portraits um but it is it is really interesting as a photographer to to reflect a little bit about this thing whenever you are taking photos of of other people and i'm sure a lot of you out there um um, have been thinking about the same and, and if you have any suggestions or tips or something that you do like please let me know because i'm I don't have the answer to any to anything, and I always want to develop my like yeah my approach to this in, in general. Um, but I want to move on to these lovely ladies. And uh, actually, this is a this is a project uh, I ended up calling Reflections. And actually, it's a another project I had with me on the same trip, uh, the same Eastern European trip I did. Uh, where I did the video we just saw. Um, this was uh, another project I had with me from the same trip. Um, and I was traveling, like I was spending these two months in uh, there in Eastern Europe and I 
was traveling throughout 15 different countries. Um, so I was very much on the road uh, all the time. But that was because I was in search of a lovely woman from every country to, um, to be part of my project. And so um, the thing is, a little bit of background for this, is that I've always loved and respected old people um, somehow. They, uh, to, me, to me, old people is just, uh, you know, these creatures full of wisdom, uh, you know, that have had lived this long life and have and thereby have gained so much, you know, life experience. And, and so they're just so wise. And I feel like there's a lot of thing we can learn for them as young people and adults for that matter too. But it's like, it's, it's really, it's something that I really like uh, spending time with elders, uh, with elders and, and, you know, talking to them and, and hear stories from their lives uh, and all that. And the thing is also that I had lost all of my grandparents, all four of them. And, and I was pretty young uh, when I lost the last one. I was, I think I was a young teenager at the time. And, and the thing is, I actually just got to a point where I realized, okay, I have one grandparent left, my grandfather. He was 95 years old. And I think I just had this moment one day when I realized I can lose him at any time, like at any point. And, and then I've just had this, I felt this urge to like, yeah, take advantage of this, the, 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 the last time I have, uh, I have where like the time left uh, where I have him in my life. And, and then I went, I actually went uh, over um, to Aarhus where he used to live. So it was a few hours from Copenhagen where I lived to visit him and, um, and actually to do a, a little interview with him because I just felt like I wanted to get out as many stories as I could uh, while I still had him in my life. So I put up a camera and uh, and asked him some questions about, you know, his life. And um, and he was so, you know, this f f cute, fragile old my, my man. And there was a lot of things he f didn't remember. And but it but it, it still meant a lot to me. And um, and it was something that I was really thinking about, like that, whoa, I, I need to spend time with my last grandparent while I still have one. And that was a little bit uh, what inspired me to do this project because, um, yeah, I just felt like doing something with it. And uh, and so, so yeah, I, I was actually doing this project along with uh, Girls Are Awesome. Um, if anyone have not heard of that, any of, any of you have not heard of them, Girls Are Awesome is a global brand and a media platform who basically works to create more representation of women. And thereby, therefore, it, it's only women. It's not so important. I just wanted to, to speak to olders. But, but, um, but yeah, I uh, I just wanted to to find uh, an old woman in in each of these countries that I was going to, and then I wanted to conversate and 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 get to know them and 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 hear some stories from their lives. So, I brought with me five different questions, which was like, uh, which was a. Uh, what did you dream about when you were young? Uh, what advice would you give your younger self? What is the most awesome thing about getting older? How is it different being young today versus back when you were young? And number five, uh, what would you really like to try in life? Um, so with these five questions, I, uh, yeah, I, I asked, um, I, I made an interview with with, uh, with a woman from from all of the countries that I that I went to, and on top of that, I also wanted to, I wanted them to, uh, hold a little portrait of themselves when they were young. So, so this you know, because it's like the whole idea was actually to to have them having a photo of themselves when they were exactly my age, and I was. 21 at the time I think but it was of course very very difficult so we just we just kept it as you know a, a, a photo from whenever they were young but just to see it, it was so interesting for me to see like see that because they, of course it's two very different photos and they look very different but you can in some of them you can really see that it's them still so I thought that was a really nice little detail that I wanted to to bring into the to the portraits too um the thing is though uh, it was um 
a little bit challenging. It was pretty difficult to 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 actually find these women uh, for my project because the thing is, whenever I arrived in a country in a new country on my trip, I had to somehow find a woman, and uh, and I didn't always I didn't always know like how to do that. But the thing is, um, I was staying um, I was staying on couch surfing. Uh, the whole time I was there, uh, and that is a platform where you can connect with local people, and then you stay uh, for free at their place, maybe on their ground, like floor or in a couch, or maybe sometimes you get your all you know, like your own bedroom if you're really lucky. But anyways, like it's it's a free concept, and then you can meet local people. It's a platform that I, that I have used very very much uh, in many many different countries, and I, I really I can really recommend uh, it for for anyone traveling. But anyways, I would. Often, most, most I would very, very often ask my local host if they, by any chance, had a grandmother who were living in in the town and who would be willing to participate in my project. And um, sometimes that you know that I succeeded with that, but many times it's like they had either lost their grandparent, you know, they were all dead like mine, or they were living it in a city far away from themselves and they didn't speak English and like. There were so many complications with this, and 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 yeah, like I sometimes maybe I I found a woman, and she had the time to meet me in these few days I was in the city. Uh, she loved the project, but she did not have a photograph, a photography of herself, and I was like, I'm sorry, but then it's we cannot do this because that's a part of my project. So, so yeah, sometimes I literally had to. Uh, approach strangers in the street and ask them like I know this might be a little bit of a weird question but do you happen to have a grandmother because I was I would usually talk to the young people that could speak English so like you know asking them do you have a grandmother maybe that would like to participate in this project and would you like to be my translator too and da, da, da. do you have time tomorrow or today uh, and yeah and sometimes I succeeded with that and other times I certainly did not but so yeah, I was traveling in 15 countries and I had luck in nine of them. There are eight photos here, but um, I couldn't add the extra one into the, it wouldn't be as good, <laughs> looking as good in the format. But anyway, so yeah, I had luck in nine out of 15 countries. Um, and um, and yeah, it ended uh, actually with my um, with my latest solo exhibition in um, here in Copenhagen in uh, June 2019, when the world was still open. So. Um, so that was really nice. Um, this is how it looked. Um, and um, there were also men, even though there's a lot of women here on the screen, there was also a lot of men that would, got really touched by the, by the, by the answers, by, by reading the answers uh, of these women, because, you know, asking a, you know, a 80 something year old woman, like, what would you love to try in life? It's like, I felt like a lot of these women felt like, yeah, now that I think about it, I still have life left. And if I could do anything, I was like, I told them, if you could just dream big, you know, what would you like to do? And they were like, they, were, oh my God, they had all these amazing wishes, actually, like flying a air balloon. And there was a lady that was like, I just, just, I would just wish to, to be able to wear a pair of high heels so I can feel pretty. And like, they were so different and, but so, um, super interesting for me at least to to uh, yeah to read and, and experience um yeah Fleming do you have a question yeah but that's just actually a comment from me uh that I was at your exhibition as well and thought it was incredible and I had the same feeling when you when you see your portraits along with the photograph they're holding and these wonderful answers there's a couple of things that come to mind. Is one, you should really continue this project. It, it, it's really special. It was really, really awesome. And it, it deserves to be continued and maybe become a book and more exhibitions. And uh, it's pretty much a project you can do anywhere, including here. If I, if I, if I can ever travel again, I'll consider it. Yeah, but do it, do it here, do it here as well. I, I think it's a good, good project to continue. I think it has long lasting. Uh, interest and value. I also think there's another thing that struck me is that we are so used to pictures and, you know, photographs and everything. And to actually, you know, you, you find people and they're like, I don't actually have a picture of myself. 
as a young person. Yeah. That is just something we we kind of take for granted that every second is documented and posted and whatnot. And to, to imagine being like, I don't have a picture of myself. That That's really striking as well. So yeah, it was just a comment for me. Awesome project, you should totally continue it. Thank you. And actually, now that you say that, it also, it makes me think of like, actually, uh, so many uh, moments where I'm sitting here when I finally had set up the whole interview and I'm I'm meeting this woman like they go through their old photos and you know back then they they didn't really have too many like cameras and it's, it's very different from 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 today obviously but so they might only have they like a, a handful of photos maybe just 10 and but seeing them being so touched and uh, by seeing these photos maybe of their husband uh, or from the wedding you know some of them had you know where there was a mo the woman where her um, husband had passed away and when she looked at that at their wedding photo when they were both young and she was just she got so sentimental and and that for me was just like oh I got so touched as well and and it was just so incredible to be um yeah to be part of this experience and um and also, actually, um, there was also a lot of women because this is Eastern Europe and, and it was also the Balkan countries. And there's been a lot of wars going on there, um, too. And uh, and quite recent ones in, in at least some of the countries. And a lot of these women told me that, you know, uh, all my uh, all my photos are burned. Uh, when my house was bombed uh, that day when I got home from school, uh, I lost everything. And so many store like uh, so many of these women both some of them some of the women that ended up in my project uh, but also some of the women that didn't end in my project but that I talked to regardless so many of them told me these the most insane uh, war stories you know when they were just yeah walking home from school and there was like shooting over there and shooting over there and ruins and like um and and all the fear that they had being young in a time like that and Oh my God, it was just so, yeah, powerful somehow to, to, to hear. And, um, and, um, yeah, it was really, uh, it was, it, it, it was quite special for me to make this project and to, uh, to gather their, yeah, their, uh, their answers and stuff. So, um, yeah. Ip, did you, um, did you have a, did you have a question? Uh -huh. Yeah, just a comment. We are sitting 116 persons uh, besides us in here, and, and it it could be actually fun that we went to our drawer and picked up a, a picture when we were young. Maybe we are from I don't know. Maybe we are from we're between 15 and 100 years in here. I don't know the age. I cannot see that, but that could actually be quite inspiring. Or if we have uh, grandparents or something like that. Uh, who could participate in such a project and maybe they could approach you and, and when we open up, maybe just holler at me and uh, oh, yeah. suggest it out there. Uh, yeah, give her, write her. Uh, maybe there's some more interesting story there. Really good project and really touching too. And and I wish I had, had done the same with my uh, parents and my, my grandparents. That would be awesome because the story needs to be told uh, maybe. And it gives a compression of life. I think is really, really good. So, thank you so much. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll, I'll. Let's see. I have a, a many, many projects in my life, but I, I would really, I, I could definitely see myself continuing this project at some time. And then, uh, I'll definitely be uh, accepting a granny context uh, uh, with an open heart. So, um, I'll, uh, I'll let you know if that happens. Um, yeah. All right. Um, I'm going to show you a few different um, photos now, like some uh, some portraits and just photos of uh, of people from uh, from around the world. And um, the one on the left here is from um, Bolivia, and uh, the one on the right is from uh, Amritsar in uh, northern India. And uh, and and yeah, it's because sometimes I think, like sometimes when I'm asked, like. You, it's a very classic question to get as a photographer, like, so what kind of photos do you take? Or what kind of photography do you do? And I'm sure a lot of you out there have been um, been like, been like asked that too. And for me, as it, pro as it might be with YouTube, or at least I've been talking to a lot of photographers who are like me, finding themselves being like, um, 
having a hard time answering this question because we as photographers, we are often many different types of photographers. And, and, and I see myself as a skateboarding photographer, but I also see myself as a just, uh, you know, if, uh, street life uh, photographer and, and, you know, different things. Um, but, but yeah, I, I mainly say that I have skateboarding and then I have like humans, people, like these are the mo the two categories that I that I do mostly. I also do a lot of other stuff in, in many different kinds of things, but mostly like these two. And these are the two genres, if you will, that I that I really really uh, like. Um, and therefore, I just felt like showing you uh, just some different um, different photos. The thing is, I'm now going to show you two very very heavy portraits um they are they are not so pleasant maybe for some to see and if you know that you are a very sensitive person uh i i recommend you to maybe say like cover your eyes because uh, i at least have a, had a friend that uh, told me that she she literally couldn't couldn't watch them she she really felt bad nauseous so uh but I want to show them anyway, and I'm going to talk uh, to you, uh, like uh, talk about them afterwards. I will say, I will say when I show them. It's gonna be in just a second, and I'll also tell you when uh, when I have gone to the next slide because I won't I won't pause at them for a long time. Um, but um, but yeah, disclaimer. Now you can't uh, blame me if anything happens because uh, I have warned you. But yeah, anyways, it might not be too bad anyways. But I'll show them. Now, all right, and I have gone to the next slide. And so, to the ones of you who who saw these portraits, um, they were obviously different from from many other kinds of portraits, and. Uh, I think now, now as I said before, I, I want to go back a little bit to this whole uh, thing about beauty and da da da. And as I also said earlier, you know, when when I do, like when I do when I do documentary photography, it's like my mind, my mindset is completely different. You know, like it, it and skateboarding and documentary, it, it's two very different categories for me. In skateboard photography, I, I I it's no secret as you saw. It's no secret that I, I manipulate the photo a lot. I take away a lot of things. I I edit it very much. Whereas when it comes to portraits, um, I could never dream of taking anything away from the face, you know, or from the person. Like anything, it's like to me, it's so important that it's it is as real as possible. I might do a little bit to the colors and the classic adjustments, but but I really want to keep it as real as possible and and the whole like my whole agenda is really trying to to show this reality things as they are um and of course it's very important for me to take these kinds of photos with a lot of respect in general if it's a if it's a model or if it's a, a homeless man or woman from the street if i take their portrait i i i really it's really important to do it with a lot of respect and um but, but yeah, like it's um I I have been taking a lot of photos of homeless people and 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 people in the streets that might look different than others, like the the two men you you just saw before, um, and um, and of course whenever I approach uh, such people I. Like I always do my best to explain why I want to take the photo. Like what 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 is the reason why I want to to like what I how I perceive them. And to me, it's like they are completely uh, beautiful and unique and special and very interesting too in their own way, as 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 anyone are in the whole world, of course. And but it's like this whole thing of like I want to show minorities to the people that don't get. Uh, exposed often you know the, the people that the people that that a lot of other people are you know disgusted by um like like the ones before that my that as i told you my friend couldn't even stand looking at them to me it's like 
this is real, this is reality, they are here too. And I just, yeah, it's a little bit hard for me to explain, but it's like, I just, I have this, I, that's my agenda, like I, I want to show that too. Um, and I and, and my wish is that these people can maybe somehow find strength and pride in, in also like showing themselves, stepping up for themselves, being true to themselves. And, and, and yeah, it's like, it is what it is. Um, and, um, and of course, uh, it can be very tough. Uh, it's, it's definitely not always easy uh, t for me to take these photos. Uh, there are thousands of thoughts going, running through my mind before I approach the person. And, uh, I'm always like, is it a good idea? Should I do it? Should I not do it? And then sometimes I think of Jan Kaup that is just like, you know, he just captures reality to, su to such an extent that it's like, okay, this is, this can be sometimes, the photos I do is much more mild somehow. So I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm going to do it anyways. And, um, but yeah, as I told, again, it, it's not always easy. And sometimes these people, they very often, actually, they do not, they do not speak English and it's hard for me to, it's, and therefore, it's very hard for me to explain why it is that I do it. And yeah, some people, they are just like, of course, you may take my photo. They don't even question uh, why I'm doing it. Whereas others uh, get very offended, actually. And I, it's so important for me to say that I fully understand that reaction. Um, of course, I understand why a person sitting there in on the street, maybe begging for money, being very, very vulnerable, uh, and in a very difficult situation, I really, I truly understand why they might, they might find it very uh, disgraceful and uh, condescending f of me to do. I totally get it, um, and I certainly do not always succeed either. Uh, I, I, I really understand, um, yeah, that it can be really tough, and that's also why all these thoughts are going through my mind. Um, and the thing, and so <laughs> I just wanted to tell you very short and sorry about this photo because this woman is um she was begging for money she it's a uh, it's from kiev uh, the capital of ukraine and somehow to me for me this is this might be one of the most actually heartbreaking portraits that i've taken or or photo of a person i don't know if, if a portrait is also in the category when it's it's so far from the from the actual human but but it, it was i i think it is it, it was it was a really strong and a really really honest moment and what happened is that uh, i'm walking here in the streets of of kiev and uh, i see this woman and she's like uh, sitting there bending over and i can actually see that she's crying a little bit and then again i'm like oh, i just had this like I need to document this somehow. This is happening. I need to document it like this. I have this stubbornness in me sometimes. But then again, like, oh, should I, should I not do it? Anyways, I decide to do it. And luckily there is, um, cause of course, I'm trying to be a little bit discreet. Um, not To not be right in her face, but to do it with as much respect as I can. So being a little bit far away and, and zoom in and, and, and being a little bit discreet. Um, and luckily there was this car in front of her that I was standing, hiding, standing behind. And the thing is, when I uh, took my lens out, pointed at her uh, and took the focus, in this very moment, I can see that she's like looking straight into my eyes. And, I, and then I just take the photo immediately. And then I take it down and look at her. And that's, and then to my great surprise, she just, um, completely freaks out um uh, like com and not that i did not see it coming maybe but just like she she really really goes crazy she's almost like she not punching me but she's a bit like you know she, i don't know she cannot i i i figure out she cannot speak english and she's just saying some things to me and i can see that she's very very upset and she's crying and and i just i, I remember i was like so the thing is, whenever, whenever the, the people I'm shooting, they um, they capture me, like they see me doing it. I'm always the photographer who's like, okay, I go talk to them, and because it's very obvious that they like they saw me, right? They spotted me, they noticed me, and then I, you know, I usually have a conversation and da da da. They ask me where I'm from, and I'm telling about my travels, da da da. But at this moment, uh, I obviously couldn't meet her in dialogue. I couldn't conversate with her. 
so I just I was just I remember just standing there like obviously not understanding what she's saying but just like being very present with her and just like letting her you know get it all out on me and um and also felt like you know I I, I do deserve this and you have your, your all your right to do what you're doing and react in the way you do because I just took a very very vulnerable photo of you so and it was very heartbreaking for me to take it it really was I was very emotional in it too but um but yeah it's um it's just to say that it's not always easy um I think all right do we have any questions or should I go to the next slide just just a short update uh, we have approximately 15 minutes left uh, yeah uh, so and you started out with I, I, can i use can i really spend 40 minutes on this one <laughs> you you can use hours so we have 15 <laughs> minutes so just uh, a record of the time so just keep on doing yes what do you cool. I'll, I'll speed up a little bit yeah no problem <laughs> um yeah this is a uh, uh, on the left it's from turkey and on the right, it's from Ghana. Super incredible in Ghana how the people are able to carry these things. And this woman was also carrying two huge bags in her hand and just casually walking down the street, smiling. Like I was absolutely amazed. Uh, also, two lovely girls from uh, from Ghana too. Uh, the one on the left, uh, she had a caramel business, so just like uh, selling uh, selling caramels from the street. And then walking, uh, having her si uh, sister just to, to give to the customers. It was really, really nice. And uh, yeah, it's uh, here's just four random portraits where I try to bring out a little bit of personality. And uh, it, for me, it's really fun to... Uh, the one on the top right, uh, I felt he had... This restaurant owner had so much character. And, and I wanted to bring out that character and personality. So like placing him there in front of his restaurant. And that's what I really like to do with some... Um, yeah, with portraits sometimes. And um, <clears throat> I uh, have 15 minutes left, I've just heard, but uh, I'll try to tell uh, this story then a little bit more fast. Uh, and uh, it's a story of, uh, I call it my Dalai Lama experience. And it's, uh, it, it, I, so um, I love traveling. And uh, at the end of 2015, I decided to travel to India also because I was going to participate in another project. I will talk about that later if there's time. But um, so I wanted to go to India so badly. And uh, and I also another thing in my life, uh, another thing on my bucket list is that I really want to wanted to experience a Dalai Lama teaching somehow sometime in life. And uh, I combined these two things because I saw that Dalai Lama was having a, a teachings in India. And so I went there and um, yeah, long story short, I, 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 uh, I went into the venue. Uh, at, when I entered the venue, I realized that people, participants were not allowed to bring cameras, like any cameras whatsoever. And I'm there obviously bringing my camera because that was everything to me at that time I was uh, 18 years old uh, and uh, yeah photographer <laughs> and then uh, I'm just like thinking like how 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 do how can I do this how can I bring in my camera because I was like I, I just need to what it you know regardless of what happens so I, I think I managed to like bring it behind my back and I wear a jacket that's I wear it very loose so you cannot see that I'm having this camera on my back. And then I somehow, I managed to actually sneak in my camera to the venue. I know very bad karma, but uh, but anyways, I just had to. And um, what happens is I, I get a, a really, really good seat, uh, actually in f very close to Dalai Lama. It was a huge, huge event. And I think there was like, 40,000 uh, attendees, uh, m most of them being monks and nuns. And uh, so Dalai Lama is sitting uh, up on the on the big chair. And then he has what I call his um, VIP monks uh, in front of him, a handful of like disciples, uh, very high sta status uh, monks uh, too, in front of him. Behind that were the uh, press area. So all the professional 
like photographers from different magazines and different medias there to to document the event, hired photographers. And that's also why you couldn't bring in your camera because there were already photographers. And and then is and then there's all the thousands of monks behind. And I get a really good seat at the at the very front, a little bit in the corner. And then I'm sitting here and it, it's everything is very overwhelming and I've, it's a dream come true in many ways. And then I'm just thinking, how can I, how can I take photos? Like I, I really, really wanted a photo of him somehow. And then, <laughs> and then uh, during these teachings, there is a lot of diff different things going on, but there are a lot of meditations where Dalai Lama speaks and uh, people maybe singing along on a mantra and then like closing their eyes. And there was some exercising, ex different exercises happening here. And there was a moment where everyone had closed their eyes because it was a short meditation. And I saw this as my cue to just simply run from my seat, bring my camera and then run uh, up into that press area. So I sneaked in once again. And I just, I, I, how I recall is like, I, I, I get up in there in that press area in the back of everyone so no one noticed too much. And then I'm standing there with my camera and like, you know, and I think that's actually when everyone opened up their eyes again and I'm just sitting there like acting completely cool as nothing happened. And then just like my heart just humping like because I was from all the adrenaline. And then I actually think like there was this old white man uh, standing next to me and uh, he's looking like at my lens. And he's like, yeah, cool equipment. And I'm like, yeah, it's Fuji. Like, no, 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 talking a little bit about that. And then just like acting cool and shooting photos of Dalai Lama. And, um, and yeah, and that's when I actually got, I, I got my photo and it was um, super cool. And actually uh, what also happened is that I ended up out in the backstage press area that I ended up going to afterwards. I ended up meeting a man called Rio Helmi who turned out to be uh, the photographer who has taken photos of Dalai Lama since 1982. Um, and he saw my photos and uh, really liked them and, and asked me if he could use my photos on their official monk website uh, for that, you know, teaching. And I was like, yeah, of course. And, um, and that's why you can see here that it actually got uploaded and I, you know, and I was credited underneath and, and I'm just like a completely overwhelmed 18 year old girl who's like, ah, so many dreams come true and it's, everything was very big um, for me. Um, so yeah, that was that little story. And on the same trip in India, I was also part of another project, which was the first skateboard tour for women ever. So it was a really incredible project in many ways. And it was very, very historical actually, because we were the first ones ever to create a skateboard tour that were only for women because skateboarding, uh, women in skateboarding is not so, it's not so big in India. Unfortunately, it's getting better now, but yeah, um, this was, uh, again, it was the end of 2015 in December where, um, where uh, we were 11 girls from nine different countries who met up uh, in India to create this tour and um, go around and uh, skate and uh, take photos and document it and, and, and do a whole project out of it. And the thing is, we, we wanted to inspire local girls, of course. We wanted to challenge this view that girls can't do bar sports uh, and all that. Um, and uh, the woman that you see here is called Atita, and she was the first female skateboarder skateboarder in in India. So she took uh, took us under her wings, and uh, and uh, it was super cool to um, to walk around in the streets in the streets like this photo where you know we have these uh, white European females uh, in their very um, maybe not so I don't know like just in their wild style and just. Uh, skating in the streets being like complete like you know doing what they want and it's and then having all these men gathering they always gather gathered around us and just like they were so amazed by 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 the by the sight of this group of skater girls cruising down the streets of like you know 
Goa or Bangalore or where, wherever we were. Um, and they were so fascinated and had all these questions and we just, um, yeah, it was really, really cool. Here we are building uh, our, we were building our very own um, like ramp, a skate ramp from scratch. So that was really cool as well to like, to to do that ourselves, to create something also maybe a bit symbolic, but also to to leave something for the both boys and girls, but for, for locals to, to skate on afterwards and to spread somehow skateboarding in, in India. That was the, whole, the, the thoughts of the of the trip. So that was really cool to have, you know, get dirty and, and really create that. Um, Monica from Australia here in the, in Goa. There were not too many skate spots around and skateboarding was at that time, 2015, not so big. There were, it was definitely a scene that was slowly getting, getting bigger, but um, it was still pretty new. So that's also why this skate ramp here, it was built a long time ago. It was completely broken and cracked all over because there is no maintenance. Um, no one is going there to take care of it. It's it's all very, yeah, very very ghetto style, I would say. Whereas here in Scandinavia and many other parts of the world, Europe, and like we are very blessed and lucky to have, you know, amazing parks, very very huge great parks with many different things to skate on, and um, it's not always the case in in other countries. And um, and yeah, um, this project uh, actually. Uh, Led uh, resulted in my very first solo exhibition in the, in uh, 2016 in uh, in Melmo, where I was uh, uh, where I was in high school too. So um, and also got exhibited in Aarhus and stuff. But that was really cool for me to uh, yeah to have an exhibition and to to share this project uh, with others. It was such a cool. It's a very goal cool power project, like in your face project. But it was uh, super cool, and I was really 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 grateful to to have been um to have been a part of it uh all right uh the next uh, the, the last but not least is um the is uh, the, the, the the my latest project which is uh, was uh, my latest project with fuji to test uh, the new 27 millimeter um xf 27 millimeter f2.8 that just uh, got on the market very recently and i was really lucky to be to be able to test it uh, before it, it got launched and um and we will now show you a video a, a, a 20 seconds i think where i am um, talking about my experience with it so fleming yeah i got it we will show you a little uh, just a little 40 second uh a uh, short video here of Sonia using the 27. The lens actually enables me to shoot many different styles, but I think it works best at capturing all the different moods uh, from the street. But honestly, the autofocus of this lens uh, completely blew my mind. Um, it was quite ninja-like, I would say. It was quite, uh, quite amazing and um, yeah, really, really fast and it's all weather sealed and really having weather sealed equipment to work with uh, makes everything so much easier it's just an amazing feeling to be able to go out into the rain while still being able to shoot you'll get very different kinds of photos uh, in the rain i think with a different mood Yeah. So you tested the 27 millimeters, uh, and there were some questions during this evening. Uh, which is your preferable lens? Is it a 35 or? Um, I have been working with a few different ones now, uh, and um, I would say uh, 35 millimeter is a uh, was a very very cherished one and. Then I had the, uh, what is it, 16 to 50, so something, yeah. 50. Yeah, yeah it's like the, the 16 to 50. Uh, actually, that's the one that I've been using the most, um, to be honest. Uh, X-Pro2, the X-Pro2 with, with this uh, 50, um, 16 to 50 millimeter, I would say that has been my 
my go-to uh, setup for <laughs> for the last four years or something. And this is almost the only, the only thing I use because it just works and I it's what I'm used to and it's just great all the yeah. time. So, yeah. This uh, just shortly, you will show us some pictures here in the end. We have uh, four or five minutes left and the 27 F2 is really small. It only weighs 84 grams. It's like nothing. It's like a feather and you can easily put your camera in your pocket if you have huge pockets when you use the X-Pro3 or if you use the new X-E4, it's even smaller and it's compact and you can lock the the, the aperture dial now and it's weather sealed as you tell and it's really fast so so it, it could be a great great travel or all all round all day lens uh, so you remember just to bring your camera all the time and and take the snapshots you 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 bump into along your daily uh, traveling or work or back and forth so but you can show us some pictures with this lens and of course it's not a lens you normally use but it's could be fun to see what actually you gain from this and what kind of pictures you took so Please show us some of the pictures and show why we'll end for this evening. And let's see the last picture from you. Thank you, Eve. Yeah, it um, it, it was it, it's twenty seven millimeters, so it's uh, fairly um, wide, and uh, and that was really interesting uh, for me to work with as I'm yeah more used to the slightly more zoomed look. But uh, but I I think it just it was a good to to capture these like um, overview shots a little bit and just uh, atmosphere vibe kind of photos from the street. And uh, I chose to have the theme on pandemic, Corona, uh, and thereby like showing these two people that were wearing masks. Um, I went to the Nick Cave exhibition and, and, and asked if I could take their photo. And uh, on the top right, it says, we are going to hug again. Uh, in Danish, and and also and and the one underneath is just a completely empty station, and um, so yeah, it was the whole. It's it's photos from Corona Hagen or Copenhagen or whatever you want to call it, and um, and 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 also these uh, in depth uh, photos I thought were really fun to play with with this particular lens, um, and and again like I was just I was just biking around and. It's like it weight it really weighs nothing. It's so light and it's so small. So it's like it's it's easy, it's no issue bringing it with me um, or with you. Super super cool. So thanks uh, for uh, for for still uh, at least hundred of and five of you to still be here and uh, and listen to me blah, 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 mumbling and um, and yeah, this was really cool, Eben Fleming. Yeah. Thank you. It, really cool to have you here. Uh, fantastic. Uh, and uh, we could actually, you, you actually was a bit afraid of you. Could you actually fill out uh, 45 minutes tonight? But it's no problem, I can tell. And you have fantastic pictures. I want to tell you that there was lots and lots of questions, really with lots of questions and and really thumbs up for your portraits and your pictures and your stories behind the pictures, your your uh, your your products so i get her some words that uh, experiment try try uh, maybe do some projects and and maybe write down some questions and put yourself some goals it will be challenging but it could be fun to expand your your photography if you're sitting out there and and want to do uh, a bit of what sonia uh, has been doing uh, you have got a lot of uh, clues to how to get started Thank you for that. It was very inspiring, uh, tremendously. I wrote down some some stuff too. I suddenly got a couple of products that's difficult, but I will try them out. So you inspired me at least. I don't know about you, Fleming. You probably uh, also have some comments to this fantastic evening. Uh, just that it was a really wonderful journey, and it was really cool to hear your stories behind your pictures. Um, like we just talked about before we went live, that we all love to hear these stories and it also means we get to live a little bit of your world. We understand your uh, conceptual skateboard photography better and your projects when you travel. And I think that was, that was really amazing. Well done. Yeah. And thank you so much yeah. for, for joining us. Yeah. Well done. I've just put up a sticky message 
where you can actually find some more inspiration. You bump into Sonia if you look at the footyfilmx.com. You find your dealers there too and inspiration, lots of inspiration on all the products and projects and everything. And you can join us at the Footyfilm Nordic Facebook or the Footyfilm Denmark, uh, uh, the Footyfilm Nordic Instagram or the Facebook Footyfilm Denmark, Sweden, Norway, Finland. And just to comment, we have people from Portugal, from Nigeria, from Holland, from Germany today. So it's all over from Europe and the Nordics. So thank you for the participating. And once again, fantastic evening. Loads and loads of stuff to think about. And uh, I just enjoyed the evening. I hope you did that too out there. So thank you very much, Sonia. It was really inspiring. And um, uh, great to have you, Fleming on board, taking care of the, the behind the <laughs> stuff. <laughs> so with this, we will say thank you for tonight. And a uh, quick we'll thank you to everyone out as well for uh, being part of our third webinar. And uh, we will have new announcements soon. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook. And I'm sorry we also didn't get to all your wonderful questions, but I put up a link to Sonia's Instagram so you can connect with her there. Yeah. So with this, thank you very much. Thank you for participating and making this a great evening for us too and hope to see you soon. Keep in touch. Look for the next webinar. It will be, I, don't, I think, as interesting as this. This is a high level. So we have something to look forward to, Fleming. It will be tough for the next one. So thank you very much. Take care out there and have a nice evening. See you soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye.